She's actually trialled, if my memory serves me correctly, out here behind uh, Briar Hill. So she's had experience at the track. Jungle Lad ran second in a trial here, over 1,000 metres and 60.72 on a dead track back on the 27th of August. He's, he's a little bit of a tip for the race, but he's playing up behind the line, sweated up there at one stage. He's the, his rider's out of the saddle. Now, what's happened with Dirty Dancer? Has it moved in yet? Dirty Dancer just not one. Starter Mr. Jeffs at his platform, picks up the button. They all stand pretty well, the maiden gallopers. Gates are open, B&B &B fast away, Myala Hills began well, Dirty Dancer, Matilda's Dream showing speed. Matilda's Dream is going to drive through and lead the way, settling from Dirty Dancer. B&B &B wide and third from Myala Hills, Princess Doopsy the rail. Still wanted getting back on settling from Baltec, Zigzam, then Silver Ghost. Well back Jungle Lad and Zatso the last one. Speed moderate in the initial stages. Matilda's Dream wanting to run. Leads by two lengths at the 1,000 metres mark. B&B's across second. Two and a half away, Dirty Dancer, Princess Doopsy, the rail. Wide out on the track, Jungle Lad taking off around Myala Hill. Still wanted fourth last the fence. Make it fifth last now. They were followed by Zigzam, Silver Ghost. Then came Baltec and two lengths to Zatso. Coming up to the 650. Matilda's Dream in front of B&B and, B and wide out Jungle Lad. They're two and a half, three lengths, Princess Doopsy. A length and a half to Dirty Dancer. Zigzam wide around Myala Hill. Still wanted on the fence from Silver Ghost, Zatso. So, and last of all, Baltec as they approach the bend. This favourite's being niggled at on the corner. Matilda's Dream in front of Jungle Lad. Now getting to the outside is the favourite running on reasonably B&B &B, and they're about three lengths on Princess Doopsy. Jungle Lad's hit the front coming to the 200. B&B's quickly moved up flat but it's coming out after Jungle Lad. Then Princess Doopsy and Silver Ghost is starting to scream down the centre. B&B in front. Silver Ghost is eating up the ground but B&B &B looked home. Silver Ghost won't get it. B&B &B, too good. B&B &B a length Silver goes princess doopsy third from jungle lad then my Alla hills and baltech behind those all set as start time approaches now roses and wine the favorite for the race he's drawn in the center of the line he raises up near the speed normally now the starter has climbed his ladder Picks up the button. And they're off. And it seemed a nice clean dispatch. Two hour strike breaker off the inside. Got away well with Star of Brooklyn, Matt Star. Roses and Wine deeper out being sent forward. So too Mr. Jackhammer. And then Sly Rambler Exodus. And then further out on the track is Magic Ben. Still very compact the field as they enter the back. Showgazer, Dry Shower both getting back in the field. And it's Star of Brooklyn who led inside the 1400. Star of Brooklyn and neck on Matt Star who's going to challenge him for the lead. Mr. Jackhammer third. Then our strike breaker Sly Rambler. Next is Magic Ben. Over on the inside is the Red Dimple. Roses and Wine's drifted back a little. Luata a length further back behind him and then to a show gazer who's back about third last in the field now with him is exodus and two away last is dry show inside the thousand and the leader off the fence is matt star led three quarters star of brooklyn magic ben's been off the track he goes up third around mr jack hammer two to sly rambler and then back on the inside is our strike breaker from roses and wine next is the red dimple lewato exodus show gazer and dry show six lengths away last of all 600 out. Matt Star in front travels comfortably at the moment. Led by a length on Mr. Jack Hammer. Magic Ben deeper out. They've beaten off Star of Brooklyn. Then Sly Rambler. Next hour strike breaker. Roses and Wines about five or six off the lead. He's coming to the outside. At two commence his run. And then Red Dimple and Luato as they turn for home. Matt Star in front. He straightens a length and a half on Mr. Jack Hammer. Here's the top weight. Roses and Wine. He is striding out brilliantly. 200 left to go. He reined them in and took the front from Matt Star, our strike breaker, but the toppy under his 59, no worries at all, Roses and Wine races away late, and Roses and Wine wins the Coleraine Cup in a breeze. Roses and Wine, two and a half lengths to our strike breaker and Showgazer third. Then Matt Star, Magic Ben, the Red Dimple, next in was Mr Jackhammer, Sly Rambler, well back was Luato with Exodus, and last in was Dry Show. Wayne Hawkeye was in City winning form yesterday. Today he wins the Coleraine Cup with Roses and Wine for Michael O'Leary. 1, 12 and 3 across the line. Well, we're looking for a Group 1 flavour to today's coverage, so Alf Matthews sought out the experienced hoop who rides the experienced campaigner. I speak of Neville Wilson. Well, Neville, flavour's getting a little bit older, but he still did win the Spring Stakes at Wait for Age. 
Yes, he did win at Wade for Age, and it was a wet track which he doesn't handle very well, and he did a good job to win there. This is probably a step up in class, but he is down a lot in weight, so uh, I'm, I'm sure the better track will suit him also, you know. Neville, you've drawn one. Um, where we, do you think you'll get in the run? No, on the horse, I'd say probably be midfield at best. Um, you're just going to have to hope for a bit of luck, and uh, if he gets it, he'll be right in the finish. Yeah, well, as you say, from barrier one and racing midfield, it does give him a chance because these sort of horses keep finding all the time, don't they? Well, there's a lot of pace in the race and um, it'll be a high pressure race, which it normally is. And, and you know, you've just got to get the luck at the right time. And Hawksy uh, has this horse, he, he just keeps coming up, so you can never underestimate him, you know. Tarder is ready. Desert Sky goes in. It's been a concerted plunge on track for number nine, Sadurka. And uh, it has actually been backed into favouritism on track. It's been a big move. Sadurka and Greg Childs. Here's Sound the Alarm going in. One of the major Group 1 sprints in Australia. Now, super impressive, has moved up. He too has been well tried. Fubu comes along as a green cap to distinguish the colours from Emission, the stable mate. Umrum about to come up. Here's Dash for Cash, the grey, coming up in company with Emission. They're both ready. Flavour stood up on the inside. Shower Hart, who ended up getting the guineas after. Uh, Running second in the preview here to Fubu, and they both line up in this event 12 months down the track. Scenic Peak, Whiteout has taken his place. Royal Voyage moves in now. Big field of 18 over the 1400. They'll go very fast. A lot of the speed is drawn wide. There's Amram set now, and Calm Smiter took out the Strapper's Prize as the outside barrier of the field is set for the Eat Well, Live Well. Racing and a good dispatch with the exception of Calm Smitzer, who's going to ease over their heels early and sound the alarm first out from Desert Sky. Sadurka away quickly and Flavors up there on the inside. Mr Murphy's on the improve quickly with Weasel Will and also Scenic Peak settling though. Desert Sky has the lead from Scenic Peak going to second and Dash for Cash is going to settle down third from Sound the Alarm. Mr Murphy, Umrum wide out improving. They're followed by Fubu about seventh the rail and then Royal Voyage to Dirk a shot of thunder. Next the Grey Lazagaletta on the outside from Flavor Weasel Will and then Shower Hart two length super impressive. Two and a half to tie the knot, Calm Smiter and Emission. Up the side, Desert Sky narrowly. From Scenic Peak, three lengths dash for cash, sound the alarm, a length to Umrum, 600 out. They're followed by Fubu, Mr Murphy, Royal Voyage, one shot of thunder. Next to Durka, jammed up between horses, followed by Lazagaletta, Flavor, Weasel Will, then Shower Heart, super impressive, tie the knot, Calm Smiter and Emission. As they cornered, Scenic Peak took the lead from Desert Sky, then dash for cash, sound the alarm, Umrum down the outside, Fubu's in trouble getting around. Run. Flavor the inside, Mr. Murphy battling along. Scenic Peak in front, sound the alarm after it. Fubu's getting run slowly but surely, and here's Umrum dash for cash. A shot of thunder, and Mr. Murphy are all descending quickly, but Fubu got the run on the inside. Umrum, Mr. Murphy charged. Mr. Murphy, Ollie's done it again. Five wins in the race. Mr. Murphy in the last bound has beaten Fubu and Umrum. Some great runs in this. Dash for cash is next, just behind them with sound the alarm. Scenic Peak, Sadurka, Flavor, then Lazagaletta, Shower. Super impressive shot of thunder, Weasel Will Emission. And they were trailed. Calm Smites a tie the knot, never came into the race. And Desert Sky, after going out quickly, is one of the last in with one more, and that is Royal Voyage. Mr. Murphy has given Damien Oliver his fifth win in the race, a race that provided his very first Group 1 success. His third race at the track, back in form after failing on the wet track, first up from a spell. He's grabbed an unlucky Fubu who was searching for runs for the majority of the straight before they came for him on the inside. But Mr Murphy descended quickly and has grabbed him and won by about a head, maybe a long head on the line. Number five, Mr Murphy, the winner. Damien Oliver, second placing, goes to number 13, Fubu, Vincent Hall. And third, number two, Umrum. 
the grand old galloper who's performed so well for many seasons grabbing third placing in the group one so it's 5 13 and 2 fourth in the race number 17 shot of thunder Wow, what a performance, Mr. Murphy. He's back in town, Andrew Bensley. He is and D. Oliver's back in town. You were pretty elated with the ride, Lee. Well, we've had a great relationship over the years, and I would rate that as one of his best rides ever for me. You know, he drew 14, he went forward, he's ended up one off the fence running about sixth. Just gave the horse every chance. It was a fantastic ride. How'd you feel down the straight here? Because uh, they were all sort of piling up and uh, trying to get scenic peak. He was under pressure coming to the corner. I was a bit concerned, but once he got him out into the open spaces and that, he really knuckled down. He's a very good Caulfield horse, and, you know, I thought he was probably the best weighted of ours, really, as a dual Group 1 winner with 54. Yeah, that, that, the Group 1 form, it, it stands out, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Well done to you, mate. Thanks, mate. That's number four. It is. Yeah. Four Eat Well, Live Well caps as we go to the Sunshine Cup. David Centre Prima. On track, but on the TAB, Carp Gun is the favourite. 360 now, they're equal. They're both 360. And that's about what the second favourite is on course. Centre Prima is a fraction shorter. Bit of a class drop for him. Shaky Student moving in and taking up its barrier position. Shaky Student comes up. Bit of the, uh, the heat's gone out of the sun. A bit of the sting, if you like. Midst about to move in. Carp Gun, Centre Prima to move in. Sheer Velocity standing well. Tommy T right up to the machine. St. Diamond, who ran a good race at Bathurst, two starts back after getting a fair way back. This is race five. TAB favourite Centre Prima at 3.50. Just a fraction shorter on track. There's not much between it and Carp Gun on course. Both are better on the tote. 3.50 and 3.90. And as I speak, Centre Prima's into $3. And that's uh, exactly what you're getting on track. SMB given a chance with St. Diamond. And the others are eased out, headed by Raffis. Now the gates are full. The red light has been switched on. Starter is up on his platform. They're off. Sheer velocity made a meal of the start and Mitz went back shortly after the kick. SMB flew the gates and went straight to the front. St. Diamond away quickly. Two lengths away, bust away. In the centre, Raffis and Tommy T hunting up on the fence to settle fifth. Two lengths away, Carp Gun inside of it. Sheer velocity. Centre Prima fourth last and three wide. Two links to Briar Hill, then came well out of its ground, shaky student and missed. A thousand metres to go and SMB scooted clear the marauding horse, leading by three or four links. Second position on the fence being held down by St. Diamond, outside of it, bust away. Two links to Raffis around Tommy T, Carp Gun behind Raffis on the outside, going up three deep now. Sheer velocity back the fence over Centre Prima, still three wide, but with a trail. Then came Shaky Student, Briar Hill, and still last of all is Mitzt. Coming past the 600 metres mark, and SMB given a breather, but still leads by three and a half lengths. St. Diamond being slapped up to give chase, and is quickly going out after the leader. Two lengths away, Raffis bust away the outside. Tommy T under pressure, centre prima well back from sheer velocity, making ground from Carp Gun, and the others headed by Briar Hill. SMB is well clear at the top of the stretch, 2.50 to go. Leading two and a half, St. Diamond knuckling down, but SMB still clear. They were full at next of all by Raffis making ground but it's SMB in front. Raffis on the outside ran to second but SMB in front of Raffis and sheer velocity and SMB's a mile too good. Went home and won it from Raffis, third sheer velocity. I think hanging on for fourth position with St Diamond in front of Centre Prima and Carp Gun, then Briar Hill. Further back shaky student, Tommy T pulling up very quickly, midst and a good long gap bust away last in. That's four winners for the day for Rod Quinn. Number four, three SMB, beating home four, Rafus and nine, Sheer Velocity. 7, 27, 37, 80. SMB prepared by Clary Connors. Rod Quinn uh, winning early on the card with the first, and he's gone on now after five races to ride four winners. But it is now the clear third elect. In fact, market price has just eased out a little. Tyrolean remains the clear third elect. Then we go to Inner Flurry and Celestial Show. And that's pretty much the way the tote betting is showing up. If you missed the ratings from inside running or before, they went 9 and 12 equal. So Skinger Tail offers good value, then 2. Then there's a whole host of them equal fourth rated. 3, 8, 10 and 11. So if you're shopping wide, market price, Prince Iluka at big odds. May the horse be with you at big odds as well. So those were the horses equal fourth rank that you wouldn't have seen with just the top four and those equal fourth raters going in alphabetical order. We're nearing start time for the naturalism stakes. Greg Miles to call the action. About four or five to come up now. Okay. Naturalism stakes coming up. 
This is D-Day for the second mortgage, isn't it? He needs to uh, stand up in the better company. Needs to win. Probably needs a penalty for those that have tried him in the uh, in the Caulfield Cup to be assured of getting into the field. Now, two Moroni runners, white cap on the second mortgage, purple cap on May the Horse Be With You. Here's Natch about to join them in the gates. He's been racing well, didn't have much luck last start. This is certainly a little harder than what he's been meeting. Geraldine standing in well. Ran a good race at Mooney Valley. He's one of the few to make ground in that field. In a flurry has moved up. Now touch the groom for Darren Gauci. He's going to come along. Turned in a slashing run last time out. They're all in. Celestial Shea the inside, the all clears through and they're away in the naturalism and the Keisha must have got a little squeeze at the start. She's dropped out to be second last with Touch the Groom and Skinger Tay, one of the first to begin. Plenty of speed near the inside. Brave Chief up there too is May the Horse Be With You settling down third now and Celestial Show is fourth the rail followed by Dame Cath, a length Prince Aluka. Natch over on the outside and over on the fence then Market Price. Two lengths further back in the field then the second mortgage followed by Tyrolean. Another two lengths to win a flurry followed by touch the groom and the Keisha last of all at the 1300 brave chief and his favorite rolled out by two lengths now skinger tay is second may the horse be with you third and prince Luke is a length away fourth followed by celestial show dame kath a couple of lengths away then market price on the inside followed by natch the outer two lengths behind these tyrolean being followed by the second mortgage who just shades it in fact on the rails then came in a flurry in the Keisha and touch the groom last of all they're spread right out a thousand meters to go. Best part of 20 lengths would cover the field and Brave Chief broke them up by two lengths. Skinger Tay second. May the horse be with you third. Two lengths to Prince Aluka. Celestial Show has enjoyed a good trail on the fence. Followed by Dame Kath. Market Price. Natch the outside. A couple of lengths to the second mortgage. Tyrolean. And then came in a flurry third from last. Followed by Nikesha and touched the groom. Brave Chief is heading to the 600 with about a half length lead over Skinger Tay. May the horse be with you. Prince Aluka fourth and then Celestial Show. Dame Kath. Market Price and Natch a length and a half the second mortgage probably eight or nine lengths from the leader and strung up for a run on the fence as Inner Flurry starts a move from Tyrolean touched the groom and Nakisha into the straight now and Skinger Tate took the lead from Brave Chief Dame Kath comes with a run wide out and Celestial Show gets into the clear down the outside is Natch and Inner Flurry and to the second mortgage is going for a needle eye gap on the rails he's got through but it's Dame Kath Celestial Show Inner Flurry from the second mortgage they're across the track Celestial show in a flurry in a flurry finishes the better in a flurry has won it from celestial show and natch close up the second mortgage and they were trailed then by tyrolean wide out and then dame kath from market price and skinger tay then may the horse be with you touch the groom well back in the field is prince aluka brave chief for second last and nikisha has finished a distant last in a flurry has won it by better Half length to a long neck on the line, 780 and 250 on Super Tab, grabbing Celestial Show and Natch, which would have been the best omen of all time, being by naturalism, has filled third place. Two, four, and eight are the numbers. In a flurry, somewhat of an enigma, I suppose, but at her best, she's like the little girl with a curl in the forehead. She's very, very good. And uh, second in from a spell last time out in the Craigley. On face value, it might have been a little bit uh, on the average side, but it was very much a sprint home, that race. And she looked flat in the straight. That... Well, what a win to win a flurry. She's back in town, the mare by Zabil. Cliff Brown is the winning trainer. And a very happy owner who puts plenty into racing is with Andrew Bensley. Well done to you, Danny Rose. Yeah, uh, well done the horse. Fantastic, wasn't it? <laughs> that was pretty satisfying, I guess. The, the horse has really, uh, well, it's had its problems along the way, hasn't it? Yeah, I think uh, Cliffy and uh, Jimmy Conlon have done a magnificent job with bringing her back. And uh, she was very relaxed today and uh, peeled off them there at the turn. I thought, well, she'll get this if she really gets a clear run. Yeah. And that was fantastic. Yeah. She did get that clear run and she, she showed that acceleration no, that uh, we all know that she's got. She's awesome if I think she gets to the outside and gets yeah. a bit of room. And uh, great ride. It's just superb, you know. What's Cliff got in mind? Uh, Caulfield Cup. 
Yeah. Um, we have had a, an invitation to the Japan Cup, but right. uh, we've kept it under wraps a little because uh, obviously, uh, yeah. you know, wait and see how she goes, you know. Yeah. But uh, no, enormous run. Yeah. Great relief of uh, tension, I guess, today. Oh, yeah, I think uh, uh, Cliffy picked it well, though. I mean, we uh, we looked at the uh, Underwood and there was no pace, and he said, we'll get pace in this race. What do you think? And I said, well, you're the coach. You yeah. make the decision, and he did, and what a great decision. Well done Fantastic. to you, Danny. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Danny Rose joining us there as they come back, Brendan, after the naturalism. Well, it's not under wraps anymore. Japan Cup invitation. Now, fourth position going to 12, the second mortgage. Fifth to 14, Dame Kath. Sixth, Black Booker, Tira Lee and Alf Matthews ran into all sorts of uh, rump steak in the run home. Yeah, actually, it was a very strange race. Celestial show I was looking for came out to do something, gave the second mortgage a decent bump. Then I missed looking at the horses like in a flurry running on. I missed what actually took place after that because the second mortgage went back to the inside and got up on the fence. So he's obviously lost momentum at some stage of the race. I'm not going to forget. OK, Stephen Arnold, the winning rider, he's uh, suffering a little bit of a foot injury at the moment and uh, he's one of the absolute best in the business. And uh, he's to the fore today in the naturalism as he returns in those well-known Danny Rose colours. Winning time, uh, last 847.45, 22.3 was the final time, 22.3. Now, Sunshine Coast, the ratings are two and four equal, ahead of three, six, and number seven is loose. Smooth Louie, trained locally by Carolyn Hickey. So back to the market figures. The ratings were keen on the two and the three. Uh, the sun's out now, which is nice at the Sunshine Coast, but we'll keep our eye and hopefully the seven restrains itself or the clerk of the course uh, does. So two and three equal ahead of number four is the way the ratings saw them. Or should I say two and four ahead of number three. Hawkesbury looking ahead. The ratings very keen on three, five and seven equal for this upcoming race. The three pad for Charlie. Rod Quinn looking to ride five of the first six races on the program as successful. Senorita Lucy at $4, $5.30. Super tab. We go down to Piccoline. Brad Pengeli's ride at good odds, $4.20. Looking ahead to Gawla, race number six on the card. And this is the Barossa Cup at risk. Top rates, three, seven, two and four is the way the ratings are. Number five is the fourth rated horse in the event. Now the Wolf Blast, Barossa Cup, 1,600 metres the journey, due to go 18 minutes from now. At risk is a firm elect across all TABs. From there you look to Al Batroon, great value New South Wales, more so Queensland. And the other one right in the market is Cocos, Jared Lorenzini's mount. It's at $5.70, better value on the New South Wales TAB. Well, jockeys just discussing with owners going over the scales after the running of the naturalism, and that paves the way once we have correct weight and a scales report for the Group 1 Underwood, a race which has been won by so many stars of the turf. A short break while this horse at the Sunshine Coast, number seven, uh, is loose. She's a clear favourite on track now. Piccolini's the best back runner to beat her. Good plonk here. Senorita Lucy there away. Senorita Lucy jumped well. Padford Charlie went straight back. Murphy's Law, Rotten, Ron. Piccolini hurried out of the machine. Settling down. Senorita Lucy taken on quickly by Murphy's Law. And Murphy's Law is going to slide across at the 1200. Ridden with urgency by Mangtale. Went clear. Two and a half. Piccolini. Senorita Lucy a similar margin. Third from Rotten, Ron. Two lengths to Hot Dancer and Padford Charlie given plenty of time to find his feet last. By the 1,000 metres mark, Murphy's Law in front and he's turning on the tempo, leading three lengths Piccolini, three lengths Senorita Lucy. Two and a half Hot Dancer going up to Eyeball Rotten Ron and two and a half to Padford Charlie, eight to nine away from the leader. That's Murphy's Law, 700 metres to go. He's clear by three to four lengths on Piccolini chasing. Three lengths Senorita Lucy, the heavily back favourite from Rotten Ron, Hot Dancer and Padford Charlie niggled at last. Before the bend, 450 to run. Murphy's Law giving them something to catch. Two and a half on Piccolini now being sold along. Two lengths Senorita Lucy. Rotten Ron slipped up inside the Kiwi Mare. They were followed by Hot Dancer. Padford Charlie still last, still six off the lead. Piccolini quickly loomed up to Murphy's Law as they raced to the 200. Senorita Lucy let down and she grabbed them in a stride. Two lengths Padford Charlie and Hot Dancer. Senorita Lucy in front. Padford Charlie's looming up. Senorita Lucy's kick. Padford Charlie can't bridge the gap. He's no hope. Senorita Lucy racing away. One of the length and three quarters, Padford Charlie, photo third, Hot Dancer or Piccolini, then Rotten, Ron and Murphy's Law last in. Senorita Lucy, number five, which was well 
which was well tried to win the race from Padfoot Charlie. So five from three, Dan Beasley breaking Rod Quinn's winning run on the circuit. So five from three, and it was Dan Beasley in the saddle, third to be confirmed in just a moment. There's the concluding stages again after this. We go to Gawler for the Wolf Blast Barossa Cup. $30,000 race, 1,600 metres the journey, and the ratings made them 3, 7, 2 and 4. Down through the market here, at risk at $3.40. Still similar quotes around the country. I can, $7.40. $7.50 Bell Addiction, $6.40 for Cocos. And a check over the page from there. Eight getting third, the previous at Hawkesbury, five, three and eight. Quinellas and trifectas to be confirmed. Kublai Khan, important to note, it is a late scratching. Seven minutes of betting time remaining. Quinellas and trifectas shouldn't be too far away from there. Favoured runners first and second, not quite as the most part of saw it. Well, we're counting down to the second of our big races today, the Group 1 Underwood Stakes. Several key contenders. We've heard from Fred Kersley, Reed Northerly. He says he was a little fizzed up, but he's normally like that on race day. Shortly, we'll hear from King Keitel's jockey. But first of all, we're going to hear from Justin Sheehan, the rider of Universal Prince. Justin, is the speed the main factor here? Yeah, um, you know, you know yourself, Ace. When, um, when you're riding a back mark, you've, you've really got to... Uh, rely and hope that they run along just to suit you that little bit better but uh, in saying that I have no control over that so um, I've just got to hope his acceleration overcomes it. We've mentioned that in the past you can't ride them against their normal pattern. No well, I've always ridden in the same way regardless of what race or or uh, what chance other people think he has what price he is. He um, he races best that way his acceleration is best when he settles and gets back um, but now without the blinkers on i do feel he will um he will learn to travel a little closer amongst them but uh just you know a little bit disappointing drawn where i have but uh you know we'll just see what happens you are not the worst served though because a few others have drawn awkwardly too yeah um well we're one from the outside but um you know he gets back so you know we just got to hope for a genuine pace and and uh, as I said, his acceleration is his greatest asset. Good on you. Good luck. Thank you, Ace. Justin Sheen and uh, Universal Prince just goes to show that the pressure doesn't get to these guys because he doesn't ride them differently. You ride them the same all the time with and to suit their normal pattern. OK, Alf, while it's difficult to imagine the picture and the size of the crowd here, a lot of the crowd goes in the grandstand in between races. A very big crowd. During race time, there's quite a swell of public urging. Uh, right up the lawns, there's a big crowd. Inside the grandstand, there is a very big crowd. A wonderful atmosphere for this Super Sunday of racing. Gawler and the Barossa Cup, not too far away. It's our next race for coverage. A check of the latest in market figures from there, and then we head trackside. But that is the scene. Nice big crowd enjoying the lawn facilities here. And under the shade of the grandstand, a very big crowd uh, within these pictures coming through thanks to the team at Sports Colour who have given us an expert eye look at almost all of the runners today before each of the races and that will be doing for the Group 1 Underwood Stakes very soon. Well, the top eight in betting at Gawler. Four minutes of betting time at risk at $3.60. Michelle Hagley rides for Michael O'Leary. Michael earlier landed the Coleraine Cup and that was with Roses and Wine and Wayne Hawkeye was in the saddle. So the O'Leary stable looking to land a couple of big country cups today. Well, Alf Matthews has been... I know. They look ready to go. Starter Lloyd Cromwell checking his watch. He can't believe how quickly they've got set. Easy landing being G'd up by Joe Bowditch in two. Cocos wants to get the head up. And the tenant goes in to help Bowditch an easy landing. They stand well. Racing. And beginning nicely from the inside, Cocos. Away fast, Albertroon. Benediction's going for the lead, but out wide. And then I, Ken, in the leading group of horses. And at risk is tucked in behind them. Pushing through, in fact...